Hi and welcome to my uh, topic. Today's topic, actually I'll start off with that, is um, have you been in a relationship that you regretted? Yeah, we're going to get juicy today and uh, that's number 405 and I'll get into that in a second. So let me start off by introducing myself and then get into the topic. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's topic, and actually today's um, episode, it's probably episode, that's a good way to use it, is number 405. Um, yeah, I've done a few of these. <laughs> and the topic today actually was inspired because I was creating a meme to put up on Facebook as I'm part of a, a five day challenge. And I was down, I was um, filtering, I don't know if filtering the right word, I was eliminating other choices and I came up with this one which seemed to work at the time which is have you been in a relationship you regretted because frankly everyone should say yes <laughs> and so I'm going to get into that one about the likelihood two if you have been repeating that for too many times and three some ways you might want to change or think ways you may want to change things so that you have a different result fair enough all right, let's get started. And I do see some friends showing up, so thanks for joining me on the broadcast. And by the way, if you're listening to this, listening to this on my podcast, originally this came out on Facebook Live, and then also got played on YouTube. So the people who watched it on Facebook Live originally got to interact directly, which is kind of the special gift of being in the live broadcast. If you're watching it in the replay on Facebook or on YouTube, you can type in the comments. And if you're on the podcast, you get to just enjoy listening. Sorry, you can't actually apply any comments, but you can reach out to me, and I'll tell you about that at the end of the broadcast. So. Today's topic um, around the idea of being in relationships you regret. Now, I'm going to get to one of the secrets in a minute. It's already hit, I already had a download going, oh, they need to talk about that. But let me speak to this part about how you tend to be in relationships that don't work. Because it's really about that sense of being in relationships that weren't what you really wanted. And there's a number of reasons why that can happen. The first part of which is you make bad choices. Yes, I'm sorry, but some people, maybe not you, make bad choices where you choose relationships that are not to the level you want to be in. Now, there's parts of this we can go into in quite a lot of depth. I'm realizing as I've said this, I've got like seven different branching topics already showing up in my mind to talk about, so I'm trying to keep this on track. I've talked about this in other broadcasts, so I'm gonna try and do cliff notes for other things I've talked, shared it on this, so that you have some takeaways you can use rather than go back and watch the other broadcasts. Of course, you can if you want to, and I'll tell you about those at the end as well. I'm planting all the seeds, it seems. So, bad choices. Now, sometimes it's a bad choice because you're not really focused on what you really want. But at other times, it's because you're running an autopilot in your um, dating choices. Autopilot, yes. You have this powerful gift and curse <laughs> called your subconscious. And your subconscious is really your younger self that is... Um, running tapes and recordings, I should use recordings because most people don't know what tapes are anymore, of what it is that does and doesn't work in, in the relationship choices and they'll choose relationships based on that recording, which is basically a bunch of beliefs, rules, agreements, um, memories, filtered memories, let me qualify that, that basically make your dating choices align to those versus what you really want. And this is the thing. One of the things, there's plenty of things in this conversation, but it's one of the things I will speak to, is that the autopilot is putting in place where you're going to choose what you don't really want, which your conscious mind is not in charge. So even though you say, I want this, this, and this, you're being pulled over by the autopilot to a different arena, and you may get relationships that don't match. But the do match is that wiring, that programming, that tape of your prior learning when you were younger. That's part of it. Now, Telltale signs that that is running automatically is that you've had this experience of regret in a relationship more than once. In fact, you may have found you look back at your past history of relationships, presuming you've had a history, not just one. Some people have only had one, which is unusual, I know, but most people have had several. And if you look at your past relationships and notice the things that were the same about them, and I don't mean necessarily the fact that your partner had two legs. I'm speaking more detailed about the behaviors, the experiences, if they treat you a certain way, negatively speaking, each of the different relationship partners over the years, or at least most of them, not all of them, but most of them have done that, 
where you're basically choosing relationship partners who would treat you a certain way that isn't what you wanted, hence the regret. Um, again, that subconscious wiring, those that recording of how a relationship should be that's in your subconscious, is pulling those relationship partners in to match the criteria it's seeking. And your conscious mind is saying, but I want this, I want this vision, this intention, this idea, doesn't get a look in, except once in a blue moon. And that's the dance that we have in relationship, is we tend to draw to us relationship partners that will mirror back what our subconscious mind is running. And I've spoken about this many times before, it's in its chapters in my book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, by the way, I'll tell you about that at the end as well. At the same time, at the same time, until you change that wiring, until you rearrange the recordings of your beliefs and your consciousness, it's gonna keep running. And unfortunately, your relationship choices would tend to be repeated the same as before, and you'll actually never get out of that rut, in a way, that, that groove that you've built of relationship choices that don't satisfy you. Unfortunately, it's the way it works. Now, a couple other pieces to this. First, being aware is a key piece I mentioned. So looking back at your history, noticing the threads, the commonalities, the repeated regret in past relationships where the same experience happened more than once. First of all, if you can see that clearly, you're ahead of the game. Because most people, not you, but most people, are oblivious. They keep going back to their dating apps or dating sites and just swipe and click and tap and, and interrogate without actually doing the inner work. And it's unfortunate because time is ticking. You know, time is wasting. Your, your relationship choices, especially as you get on into future decades, if you're not changing the wiring, you're going to have the same experience again and again. And I would hope that by the time you're in your 30s or your 40s, certainly by your 50s, hopefully, you'll have made some different choices or at least figure, figured out you need to get help to change those choices because this is the, the fun part. Well, not so fun, but I'll play it this way. Is that subconscious recording, that wiring from when you're younger, that belief system you're still running from when you were six, seven years old, doesn't go away on its own. Unfortunately, it's in there for a reason, and the actual reason is positive. It just doesn't show up that way. And this is the whole misconception about, oh, I'm going to change the way I'm dating because it ruins my love life and everything sucks. It's like, it might feel like that, but the wiring inside is intended for a positive purpose. The execution may suck, but the positive purpose is what's ruling here. And when you can change that wiring and when you can reframe it, and it is reframing in a way, the rules that you're running inside, because these rules are like your, um, it's your rule book to play life and love and everything else. And if you don't change the rule books, you're gonna keep getting the results you're getting. If you wanna change that, you gotta change the rules. I think that makes sense. So having relationships you regret is a powerful lesson because if you don't change the rule book, you don't change your dating patterns, you tend to repeat the regret again and again and again. I'm sorry to break the news to you, but if you watch my broadcast, I do have a bad habit of giving you, well, not, no, let me say that, I'm gonna say that. I do have a habit of teaching you how to get out of the bad news, but you do experience in my talk some lessons about, oh, that's me, I've done that, oh crap. So now you're going to watch me. If you're not going to watch any of my broadcasts now, I understand, but I would recommend watching because I do provide insight, help, and homework that will get you out of those traps. So just to be clear, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just watching how I say this. I don't shoot myself in the foot. Um, a couple other pieces I want to just I want to drop on the table as well. The challenge with relationships, oftentimes is we think it's the other person's fault. This is one of the pieces I'm going to get into now, I can feel it. That relationship history I was telling you to look back at, those past relationships I suggested you reviewed and you see the same thing happen every single time, it's very tempting, and most people do this, to go, oh, it's not me, it's them. And you're going to blame those people for the ones that hurt you. Now, now I'm going to say this carefully, because this is going to make it really challenging for you. If you were hurt in past relationships, and I mean physically, emotionally, mentally, however that was, sexually, if you had that happen in several relationships, it can be very um, desirous to blame them, to make you feel better, and I understand that. But based on what I said earlier, to consider the, consider the perspective 
that perhaps you actually participated in that experience, as in the sense that you, some strange, convoluted, and again, unchosen way, have invited that into your relationship experience. I'm not saying that you're a masochist or that you're a victim because you victimized yourself. However, it's a very powerful lesson to learn that way. And I'm not saying you should learn that way, but again, this is the bad news. I'm going to give you some good news. So stay with me. It can be frustrating because it's like, it's them. I didn't do anything. Well, yes and no. Maybe you didn't do anything cognitively, co consciously and in your awareness to go, I'm choosing this relationship. It's going to hurt me. I mean, none of us do that really. But sometimes, in fact, oftentimes we as human beings have a default automatic, automatic wiring, uh, automatic, sorry, autopilot, as I mentioned, autopilot, that's what I'm using, I don't remember what I said, that is running us into choices that match its criteria. Yes, its criteria, not yours, its criteria. And understanding the difference, and there is a difference, is what's going to free you. I'll get to your freedom in a second, so bear with me again. So, I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to bring it up again. When we're very young, we don't necessarily have full conscious awareness of life itself. We don't usually come into life going, okay, I'm going to do this career, I'm going to dress up like this, I'm going to live in this town, I'm going to do all this work. We don't really do that. We go, mom, dad, take care of me. And we tend to fall into that learning and, and nurturing, hopefully, environment. Now, some of us didn't get raised in nurturing environments, and that's another piece. But what does happen as we are younger is we are hungry, hungrily, hungrily, yes, hungrily, learning at the feet of the big people, our parents and grandparents and older adults, all the things about how life works. And it's, it's a, it's earth school for, for kids in a way. We learn this stuff that we didn't learn necessarily in school, like as in academic school, but we learn it as part of life lessons. Those life lessons, unfortunately, aren't at a certain standard. There isn't some educational board that goes into the house and goes, okay, what lessons are you teaching your, your son or your daughter? None of that. I'm, I mean, come on, let's get real about it. You learn by watching your parents, or the lack of parents as well. That can play out as well. Your parents will model to you how a relationship should look because at that age of three, four years old, you don't know any different. And having compassion for your younger self is a good, big part of this, by the way. Knowing that what happened, happened. It's not a, it shouldn't have happened. It's like, it happened. What you do with it, that's the where the work is. So at that young age, you're getting these tapes installed, that recording, as I mentioned, the beliefs about how relationships should be stuck in your subconscious mind. And your conscious mind hasn't even really shown up yet because at three, four years old, you're still discovering the world going, that's mine, that's not mine, this is life, that's not, you know. It's all that journey of exploration and understanding and learning, which is what kids do. The challenge is as adults, if you're a parent, they're watching your every move. So if you're worried about your kid's future, model what you really want them to learn the best of your ability all the time and explain to them when you're off base so that way they know to make a choice. Now most parents didn't do that for kids, certainly didn't for me and I'm sure it didn't for you. So that understanding of how we learn is a powerful lesson when you're a kid and into your adult life which you'll get to but also a powerful, parent, powerful lesson to the parents who have kids of how you can raise them differently. So that's another talk and I know some of my friends who are parenting coaches can teach you about this stuff. But the simple piece is this, I'll give you this piece now before I jump into the next part of your mature maturation. As an adult, it isn't so much what you say to your children as much as it is how you act and the way you respond and the way you interact with your relationship partner especially can be a powerful um, impact, or I should say has a powerful impact on your children. So as a parent with children, stepchildren, foster children, however that works, your presentation of how you live your life, and I don't mean the way you dress or the look of how, how nice your car is, it's how you behave and how you speak and how you articulate and how you present. They pick up their stuff, especially the younger ones. And so they will learn from you what you give to them without even questioning it. And that becomes the way they live life. Now, flip that to what I mentioned earlier about you growing up as a young child. You did the same thing to your parents or those who raised you you looked at them and go, they must know everything because they're bigger than me. This is kind of the wiring because we think logically, well, <laughs> sort of logically, but the belief structures we create inside that recording, as I mentioned, is an imprinted message that we tell ourselves about how love is expressed. 
because of the way we watch our parents do it. You know, if they argue all the time, we think that's normal. If they fight all the time, we think that's normal. If they're loving all the time, we think that's normal. It doesn't matter what they do, we think it's normal. And that wiring is installed without any filters. Oh goody. Fast forward 20 years, 30 years and beyond. As an adult who is now consciously aware of what you want, you've done your vision boards, you do other things, and I mean my program has a bunch of stuff in it that works for you, but the thing about it is that's working with your conscious mind. Well, there's some of that is embodiment, which is now in your body, hence embodiment, obviously. The subconscious mind is integrated to your body more than anything else. The conscious mind is kind of the thought process and your mental activity. But the subconscious mind ties into your emotions and to your physicality in a lot of ways. And so when you are out dating and you think you're going to have this experience, all of your energy that's in your body, that's in your subconscious wiring, in your belief structures, is going to take you over there somewhere else where you didn't even plan on going because what's happening is your default wiring has full dominion almost all the time. So as I mentioned before, if you had relationships that you regretted, this is going to be probably why. Your, as I mentioned before, and I said this, and I'll make sure you get this clear, that yes, you may have been in relationships that were painful, that were maybe abusive or suffering in some way where you were not regretting it and you blame them or you judge them and think they're the ones that caused it. They may have caused it, but your wiring is what invited it. And I don't mean to take this on personally and get depressed or anything, please, so bear with me. Stay with me, please. This is big stuff. The point is that if you see this and you see the repetition, you now know that you have a choice. And that choice is to keep doing that, as in don't change anything, or you can change it. And this is the good news. It's not required that you live this way forever. So if you have some challenge past relationships aren't working, the good news is you can change it. Now, it does take more than just doing affirmations in the mirror. Trust me, I know. Been there, didn't work. But it does do, or it does require rather, is doing some self-investigation. Now, first of all, as I've already given you some clues along the way, if you take some time to look back at your parents' interactions when you were younger, maybe they were divorced when you were young, maybe one of them died when you were young, maybe they drank or didn't stay home or whatever that was, Look back at your childhood when you're basically from zero to say seven, six, seven years old. Once you become clear about that, you may want to journal on this to write it down. And this could be your homework, so to speak, if you want to do this. And look at the the major, um, I want to say bullet points, the wrong thing. To be honest, look at the major pain points. Look at those things where you go, oh, remember that, that wasn't fun. Because those things will stick out stronger. Now again, this is going to be subconscious, but you can tune into this. And this is how I'm going to set you to do this. I'm just saying as it comes through. Um, okay, this is the advanced stuff, by the way. So if you're doing this, it's going to be advanced work. So trust, trust me on this. I really shouldn't. T- I sh- I'd really just sell this. I shouldn't give it to you for free, but I want to give it to you now because you've been with me this long. When you do journaling, and I actually have a process called free flow writing, which is a work I learned from my master's program, it helps you really to defend emotions. And I've always, I learned along the way that one of the powerful lessons is that when you write with your dominant hand, you can vent a lot of stuff. But if you want to go deeper into your subconscious, you use your non-dominant hand to vent. In this process, in this format, what you can do is take those thoughts about your childhood, looking at your parental relationship above you, how they took care of you, how they they didn't take care of you, whatever it was, and start writing with your non-dominant hand. Now, I recommend not doing it in your journal, do it in some plain paper so you can get rid of it if you want to. Because if you're in journal, you kind of get stuck with it. And write out... And you can start writing with what you think you remember, but you'll notice that what happens, and you may not be able to read what you're writing, which is not the problem, not the, not the issue. But you might start becoming aware, bringing to your awareness from the subconscious, things that you may not have remembered about how your parents interacted. And what this does is it brings to the awareness by the light shining on it of your truth, of your seeing, sorry, let me try that another way. It brings to your awareness what was subconscious and buried, and you can shine that light on it and see what's really going on. Now, I'm warning you this is very advanced work. This is why I do it with my coaching clients because I'm there to hold the space and work with them through this process. But if you're, if you're courageous enough and you're strong enough in doing this, you can take some for yourself. Another piece I wanna give you now because this, I don't wanna leave you in the middle of this. So you've gotten to the point now where you've expressed some of those things from your childhood that are influencing your dating choices as an adult. And you've, you've, you've resourced your subconscious wiring of what was 
or recordings what was still running by using your non-dominant hand. The first thing that may come up for you is judgment. It may be hurt feelings, it may be regret, it may be anything on the level of negative feelings that don't feel good. This is where self-love is critical. To actually have compassion for yourself because, again, this was happening when you were two or three years old. You have parents who were adults doing things in front of you that you didn't have any understanding of. It's not your fault. So please be clear, it's not your fault. So self-love, self-compassion, to really be kind to yourself as you're going through this is a huge requirement. Yes, requirement. Because I want you to get clear that loving yourself is a key to this because you deserve love, period. Second piece is once you've gotten to that place of compassion and you've put love for yourself and you can do the work to, self, to forgive yourself because you may have been writing some judgments at this point now, looking back, which you don't deserve. They're not accurate. They're judgments because you think you should have known better. Here's a statement for the truth. You always do the best you can in what you know at the time you do it. That's a fact of life. If you knew better, you'd do better. It's that simple. <clears throat> so now, you might know better than you did a few minutes ago. So you can do better going forward. That's what good news. Also, that paper you wrote on, in my free flow writing format, I always recommend you burn the paper because it releases the energy of what was stored in there. If you feel that's appropriate for this one, which you might, you can do the same thing. I'm not saying you have to. <clears throat> Excuse me, but if in the writing you felt like you really vented out some negative stuff, then roll, crumple up the paper and burn it. It, it vents the energy, releases the energy. Now, these are keys that will help you. The deeper work is going to be integrating the parts that you've left back there. And that's the work I do with my coaching. I can't really facilitate it over a, a, a teaching like this. But this will give you some steps in the right direction. If you do this work, as I've mentioned it in this talk, I, I, I will say invite you to. I would say I please request that you contact me and let me know how it goes. Because this is not easy work. But if you're taking it on, I want to make sure I can support you. Now, if you want to go into coaching with me, we can talk about that too. But I want to make sure you do get support along the way. This is not easy work. But if you want to change your dating future, you've got to rewire the dating past. That is the simplest um, bottom line I'll give you on this one. Because the truth of how we as adults date is hardwired way before we become adults. And I've learned from my own lessons, and I've shared these in my other talks, the lessons I learned along the way. And I was, I was grateful and blessed in some ways and cursed in other ways. So we all have our challenges to bear, as it were. So I hope this has made sense to you. This is, this is a big piece of the work that I do. It's also a big piece of the work people don't get because no dating app or matchmaking service usually helps you with this. But if you want to change your dating future, you've got to resolve your dating past. That is the simplest truth I can give you. Okay, that was a lot deeper than I plan on going. And that was quite a talk I, I vented at you. So I hope it's given you some thought, food for thought and some considerations to work with. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, these talks are on my business page and also on my YouTube channel as well as on my podcast now. Yes, I've got a podcast. But if, before I get to that, if you want to reach out for more support and more help, I do offer a, compliment, a complimentary clarity conversation, a discovery session, my gift to you. We sit down for 30 minutes and talk over the phone or Skype if you're out of the country and see where you are, what you're looking for, and how I can help you. But also to give you some next steps. If you do this process and you want to sign up for a discovery session, I highly recommend it because in that 30 minutes, I will, I will do my best to give you insight and guidance to get you to your next steps. Even if you don't want to work with me, I will help you with that. So that's that. Um, again, my recordings are stored on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages for the Masculine. And now my new YouTube channel, sorry, new, my new iTunes uh, podcast, which is called Message for the Masculine. I'm slowly but surely adding on my broadcast from way back when to now to update my um, um, audio version of my broadcast for those people who want to listen to me when they're driving or other places too. So um, with that, if you want to do the homework, I do recommend you do it carefully. You take care of yourself and you, get, you do apply self-loving through the whole process. That's a big part of this. So you got my emphatic reminder to love yourself through this process. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me. And if you want to make any comments on this broadcast, please do do so below and I'll, I'll respond when I sign off. If you, know anybody should, if you know anybody should watch this, please share it with them. If you want to share it in your groups, you can do that as well. Um, this is big stuff, I know. But if you want to change your relationship paradigm, you've got to go deep. So with that, I wish you well. Take care of yourselves. I will see you again tomorrow with another broadcast. 
and uh, thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and thanks for listening to what I'm saying and taking it to heart, because it's your life that's improving. I'll see you again tomorrow.